I love patriotic holidays. I'm lucky because my birthday is the 3rd of July, so I celebrate with red, white, and blue for days. Well, this was an autograph quilt that we made at a party on July 3rd, 1988. Well, here I am in my typical holiday outfit, and everybody came to make a signature block. This is Barbara Bredewick here. This is Loretta Smith working on her block, and Marvy and Irene, and also Charlie Weckley made a block, and all of their names are in this quilt. It was just so much fun. Well, my grill was a present from the Quilt in the Day staff, and it's given me hours of pleasure. Well, I have fond memories of a video that my sons did. They came on my country flag show in 1991. Well, we've laughed over that video for years. Grant was grilling the burgers and Orion was fake cutting the watermelon. Just take a look. My sisters Patty and Judy are expected soon. We have some last minute jobs to finish up before the picnic. Orion's helping out and slicing the watermelon, and Grant's getting the hamburgers cooked for us. So how you doing? Hi, Ma. All right. Now you too can be a modern day Betsy Ross and make your own country flag. Well, Orion never did get the melon cut, and in the process of the take, Grant dropped the burgers on the ground several times. And when we were finished, Orion was starving. Well, he didn't know the burgers were on the ground, so we ate them. Well, it's great to have a birthday on July 3rd. My mom says I popped too soon. Well, to celebrate my early arrival, today we're going to make the early firecracker quilt. It's just perfect in red, white, and blue, and it's from two and a half inch strips. Just what a perfect way to display patriotism. Well, at least I know these burgers weren't on the ground. So let's just get popping. This early firecracker quilt is a real flag raiser. Juanita Haynes did a terrific job with her patriotic fabrics. Oh my gosh, their stars sprinkled everywhere. And then when the blocks were set together, she used that background area to applique stars right in the center. Well, if you notice, there's red diagonal stripes, and then in the opposite direction, blue diagonal stripes. Well, she finished it off with a framing border and more stars. Well, this quilt is so much fun to do because you can use scraps, all the red, white, and blue scraps you have. Or if you're like me, you like to go out and buy all new. You can actually work with fat eights, just small pieces, fat eights, or if you want fat quarters or quarter yard pieces, get an assortment of reds and blues. Juanita used five reds, and five blues. Now, this is what one block looks like. You have the three, three stripes. They are all two and a half inches by six and a half inches. Two reds and one background in the center. And then from the blue fabrics, a five and a half inch square cut on one diagonal and one background also five and a half inches. So I have my scraps all stacked up in the reds with the background, and I'm just gonna take these red squares and switch them with the blues. Let's just do that. Now, this is the second block, the three blues in a row, again, two and a half inches by six and a half inches, or two blues in a background in a row. You've got the red five and a half inch square, the background five and a half inch square. All set, ready to go for some assembly line sewing. This is the best part when you can just sit down and fly with your pieces. Now it's a quarter inch seam, 15 stitches to the inch. Gosh, I never change, do I? But just take the background 
and flip it right sides together to your red. And the reds are all in the very same order. So that way, when you're sitting and flying, you don't get confused. Now these are cut to size, so there's very little squaring up to do afterwards. That's really fun too. So just continuously pick up that background, flip it right sides together to the red, and just pedal right down there. I've got to get these lined up a little bit better. My gosh, I'm just too excited thinking about my birthday. Now, then take it, once you have them all sewn together, pull from bottom back up to top again, open them up, and add the top piece to the right side, and just continuously sew. Well, I went to Barbara Brackman's identification book. I always like to find out where these patterns originated from, and you know, what they're called, et cetera, et cetera. Well, back in 1931, Woman's World published this pattern and they referred to it as cracker. Now, whatever that means, cracker. I thought, oh, maybe an oyster cracker, who knows? But in Ruth Finley's book, she said, never dispute the name of a quilt pattern because patterns just have so many different names. But for right now, this was Cracker in 1931. Okay, take your strips, just set the seams with the dark on the top, open and press right into it. This is an easy one because you can really just go right down through that middle. Get those seams pressed so that they're all behind the back side. Cut them apart. Now, if they need any squaring up, oh, I'll allow you to do just a little bit. How about like right along here? You could just line up your ruler, just trim off that little sliver there and get rid of it. Now, we're done with the strips. I'm going to take these off the table. I need to have the blue triangles, and they go on the opposite ends of the stripes, just like this. So take them, lay them out. Put this piece right sides together and get that strip centered so that you have equal tips hanging out on both sides. They are oversized because we're going to square them up later. That's the best part that I really like about my quilting, how nearly everything is a little oversized, so there's always extra to square it up. Hold those seams flat with the stiletto. Now you would assembly line sew one triangle to every side, but I'm just going to stop with one and show you how I like to place it. For the second triangle, I like the block wrong side up and beside it, the triangle right side up so that you can just lift up this piece, slip it underneath. The bias is on the bottom. You've got equal tips hanging out on both ends so that you can see it. You can go ahead and get it arranged and make it perfect. And just slide it right through there. Well, when I was growing up, when I was just four years old, my favorite birthday was whenever my mom gave me an Annie Oakley cowgirl outfit. I will never forget that. I just admired her so much. Thought that I wanted to grow up and be a cowgirl. Gosh, maybe that would be more fun than being a quilter. What do you think? Okay, I'm just going to open and press those seams so that they're behind the triangles. And then take your six, take your 12 and a half inch ruler and trim off those tips on both sides. I'm going to just line up a straight line here. And in one sweep, you can just get the tips off, get rid of those, turn this patch around. Once again, line up a straight line, get those tips cut off. And we are ready for the last step. That's just these background squares, or background triangles cut. And they go exactly like that on both sides. Flip them right sides together, exactly like you did with the other triangles. And then once you have those pressed, then you need to square up your block and make them a consistent size. The average size is around 8 and 3 fourths inches to nine inches. Just drop your diagonal line in your ruler right down through the center of the background square. Put that quarter inch, ooh, it's looking good, right there and right there. And trim on two sides. Go up the right 
across the top. Take those pieces, get rid of them. There are two sides remaining, so just turn your whole block around and then put the quarter inch lines right there. Now, your block should be around mm, eight and a three quarters. Mine is eight and seven eighths. And I want to make every block that same size. Okay, trim them off, get rid of them. And you can see right there, I've got my seam allowance. That is good. You want to have your seam allowance. Well, let me just move these aside, and I'll show you how to lay out a couple of blocks. Take two of the red and lay them so that you have that red stripe going right through there. Then take two of the blue and do the same thing. Now, it would be really great if I could come up with some different fabrics. How about let's shift around. You just kind of go through your stack until you find different ones. Okay, two blue, and they are going in the opposite direction. This is all it is. It's like sewing a group of four all together. Well, Juanita's quilt has four across and five down. So just sew those blocks together, add your borders, and you're finished. Well, I have a couple of other projects to show you out of this single block. You can pop all kinds of ideas for the firecracker block. Well, my son's and best friend signed blocks, and Teresa set the eight blocks together two by four. It's perfect for a table runner or a narrow wall hanging. Well, it's interesting that the fellows all chose red stripe and the girls chose blue stripe. Hmm, wonder what that means. Well, Tula Nicholas did the same size table runner, very country looking, with stars in every fabric. And then she utilized the center space for an applique star. Now that star is easy to do. You just take paperback fusing and you draw the star on the paper side. Then you place the fusing against the wrong side of the fabric, press it in place, and then it looks like this. That paper just sticks on there. Then you cut on the line, and all you have to do is just peel that paper away. The fusing is on the back side, and you just fuse it right onto your square. And then Tula just finished the outside edge with a narrow zigzag stitch. Well, salute. Lorna's and Linda's table runners, both very patriotic, good friends, and they did them together. Now they set their blocks on point and left off a triangle on each of the blocks to get these outside edges. Now their stars are simply small, narrow zigzag stitches, and oh, look at the cute striped red backing they selected. Very fun. Well, your blocks don't need to be patriotic because Shirley Beamer combined four yellow and blue blocks for a table centerpiece. Now, Shirley decided if her center didn't match perfectly, her plan was to just put a flower arrangement right in the center. Well, she did tons of quilting plus a beautiful job. And Shirley Riley made a cozy comforter in Christmas colors replacing the blues with the greens. And she even hand quilted her stars with cute little ties to hold the layers together. She is ready for Christmas. Well, in 1932, the Kansas City Star named this block the autograph block. This is the ultimate in autograph quilts. When I asked my students to make autograph blocks for my 25th anniversary celebration, a total of 712 blocks arrived, representing every state in the Union. Well, Teresa spent days sewing them together, and this finished out at 9 feet by 48 feet. You know, it's the size of six king-size quilts. Well, Netta Virgin was generous enough to quilt it with her long-arm quilting machine, and you know, it took 35 binding strips to finish it off. Well, this spectacular quilt debuted in April 2003, draped over our huge tent in Paducah, Kentucky during the AQS show. Oh, there were many people that dropped by to find their signature. Now, I hope you're looking for yours, too. Well, we took this huge quilt 
and we wrapped it around my log home in Julian, just so you could see the magnitude, the size of this whole thing. Well, my plan now is to have the world's largest sleepover under one quilt. The early firecracker block and the autograph block had exactly the same value placements in them. They were two darks on the outside edges, two dark strips with one background strip in the middle. And then on the end of them, there was that dark triangle on each side and opposite sides, two background triangles. Well, now we're going to introduce a second block with different value placements, but sewn exactly the same. This time, we're going to have just one dark strip and two background strips beside it. Now this time, the dark corners are going to be parallel with the background strips, and the background corners will be on the opposite edges. Well, Teresa and I had so much fun selecting 10 different batik fabrics and one background fabric that just pulls them all together. Now, if you notice, you can see one diagonal row where the block has the two dark strips in it. And then in the opposite direction, the opposite block with only one dark strip in it. It just creates such an interesting effect. And then we took all of those remaining strips, just cut them into a piano key border. Now, it was easy to quilt because Teresa just did diagonal rows with the walking foot. Well, I want to show you how to have some magic with those strips. Just take a variety of fabrics, cut your strips salvage to salvage, cut them on the fold, and then turn them all right side up. I have the same number of background strips as I have of the different print strips. So you can just go ahead, line them up together, trim off the salvage edge on one edge, and then cut these into seven inch sections. Let's just cut along. You know, they're a little oversized, so they don't even need to be perfect. That's my favorite. Okay, let's just move this along. One more set, seven inch pieces. This is your fudge factor right here. I'm just gonna take it and get rid of it. Now, lay out your blocks. You're gonna have for the first one, you've got your two dark strips, and for your second block, only one. And then take your background right here. You only need to have that one background in the center. You've got two backgrounds left, so they're going to go on the outside edge. And if you want to think of it as positive with two dark and negative with one dark, you can look at it that way too. Now, that's your strip setting. You assembly line, sew those together just like I showed you. This time you're probably going to square these up to six and a half inches before you add your triangles. Now in this one, your triangles are going to go here and here. And then on the last two sides, they're going to go just like this. And this is exactly like I showed you on the first block. Now on the second block, let's just give it a little space right over here because this time we're going to take and line up our triangles so that they are parallel with that background strip along there and there. And then on the tops of those strips, on the last two corners, like this and like this. And once those blocks are sewn together, square them up to eight and three-fourths or nine inches, whichever is the best for you. And then sewing them together is so much fun because you've got all these scrappy blocks. You want to see how to do it. Well, they alternate. This is the one stack. Let's just go ahead and do it like this. It's going to go here and then over here like this. And so we can take this stack, put it right here like this, and how about one right up here like that? Look at good already. Well, when you sew them together, there is one match point, and it's right here. You want to have these lined up as you assembly line sew them down vertical rows and then across the other way. Well, let me sew these blocks together and I'll show you how to do some binding. This is as bright as frosting on a birthday cake. Well, we've been having a lot of fun with it. Orion and I pieced the backing, made it really bright. 
and then we layered it with the 100% cotton batting and the quilt top right side up. We smoothed it out and we safety pinned it through all three layers. Well, I'm going to do my stitch in the ditch quilting, but first I want to show you how to put on the binding. Oh, we'll get that done quickly. Now, I took my three inch strips for my binding and pieced them together into one long piece. And then I pressed them wrong sides together lengthwise. So it's all ready to go. I've already done one side, I am into it. I have my walking foot on my sewing machine and my stitch length is 3.0. Now you could do 3.0 or 3.5, whatever you'd like. Now the seam allowance on the walking foot is about 3 eighths of an inch when you line up the edge of the foot right with the raw edge of the quilt. So I'm just going to keep it at 3 eighths of an inch and just sew right into the corner. Now so I stop 3 eighths inch from the corner. I'm going to put a straight pin right in there. That's my marking point. Okay, I'm just going to keep going right down to that safety pin and stop with needle down. Now, raise your presser foot and just do a turn so you can go right into the corner. So drop your presser foot back down and just sew right in there. Okay, needle up and I'm going to show you how to fold this corner. Take this piece and fold it straight up on the angle. And then once you have that nice diagonal line in there, take this piece and fold it straight back down so it's all lined up just like that. Perfect. And now I'm just going to turn to the next side and continue stitching right where I was. Okay, drop the presser foot, continue right along there. And as I stitch, I'd like to just have a little bit of tension in my binding strip. Make sure that my backing is pulled out to the edges so it's nice and flat. Just kind of have a triangular shape in my hand like this. You just keep on going around the outside edge. Repeat that technique at each one of the corners. But I want to show you how to trim it out and do that mitered corner. Let's take a look. Okay, that better pull out that pin before I do any trimming. That's laying nice and flat right there. Grab your rotary cutter, your ruler, and trim right up to the raw edge. And trim one side, and down the other. Oh, and this is the tricky part. What you do not cut off that corner. Now, this piece right here is just going to flip right open and you've got that perfect mitered corner there. Now, I like to do my binding by machine. Oh, you know me. have to get it done quick all the time. So to do that, you just turn it over to the wrong side and then with your straight pins, you pull the binding so that it covers that previous line of stitching. And boy, I sit down and I'll pin for maybe, oh, 15, 20 minutes. Get the whole quilt pinned the whole way around. It goes so much easier if you get it done right in the beginning. Now, right here at the corner, you just take it and just fold it at that angle. Just fold it right back. That tucks right in there perfectly. Keep on going right around that corner. That looks like a great miter on this side and on this side. And send, so then all I do is just stitch in the ditch around the outside edge and you'll have a perfect binding. Do you remember your childhood days and visiting your grandma? Well, my grandma Nagel was the gentlest lady. You know, she was always ready with sweet treats to please us. Oh, she had jars of old-fashioned orange slices that just made our mouths water. She had tart lemon drops, made us pucker up. Well, for the young at heart, this is grandmother's candy jar quilt in reproduction fabrics. The blocks look just like saltwater taffy. Well, they're both positive and negative blocks, alternating every other row. Well, the corners are sewn onto the strip for the positive block, and then for the negative block, the corners are sewn onto the background strips. You know, this is an easy one to quilt by stitching in the ditch with your walking foot. This 
is a candy roll, a no-calorie favorite for quilters. A bright back quarters, just carefully wrapped in cellophane, looks just like a piece of hard candy, only it's sugar-free. Well, Teresa took her candy roll and turned it into this bright flannel quilt. Now, this would make any child smile. And now with her leftover strips, she made a piano key border. Now, Sandy Thompson quilted happy flowers in the centers of the blocks, and then she used variegated thread and stitched all through the borders. It's just so cute. Well, whether it's candy or quilts, they're old favorites for kids of all ages. So may your quilting be sweet.